or I'll, I'll count to three and then we can like clap into the mic or something. Sure. Okay. So one, two, three. Oh, I thought one, two, three, clap. Okay. Try okay. Again. So one, two, three, clap. Is it okay. bad that you said clap over over the clap? No. Okay. Cool. Hi there, Matt. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> Long I time. Is, uh, yeah, I I can't remember if when the last time was we actually spoke on 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 Skype or anything. Um, probably like since you went to California, uh, Washington, California. Um, I maybe? went to California. Yeah, you went to California. Um, probably actually about a year or two, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it has. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It, it was since you had a kid, right? I don't even know, honestly. It's been a while. Yeah, because I think we did, we actually tried to like sync up at one point and and play uh, uh, Monaco online. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like neither of us had mics because we we're too concerned about waking up babies. Yeah, I think so. And definitely, uh, my kid was still really tiny because she was not really uh, interrupting me that much, and yours was, I think, quite active at the time. So. Oh, he still is. Okay, well, probably a year ago then. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that that said, I mean that's uh, I'm I'm in the uh, the Vancouver library right now in a sound booth because uh, any hopes of trying to record stuff from home with my almost two year old is like just an impossibility. <laughs> we have a bigger place than you, and uh, I don't know what it is. She likes it when I she likes visiting me in my little space I've made for myself. So it's also an impossibility here. Yeah. So I am in that space now. However, just we uh, we took the kid out. Of the picture, so yeah, good. <laughs> that's, that's where the kids belong. <laughs> that's where they belong yeah. for now. Uh, yeah, so I guess you posed the question just before we started re- recording. Uh, we've gotten a sort of a, an idea for a name. Do you have any ideas? I hadn't thought about it at all. I think um, we've only really discussed what we're going to talk about, which is video games. Uh, obviously, it's a thing important to both of us for a long time so we have our names we have video games uh, throw those together and make a name for a podcast i don't know okay well hopefully we can just uh, randomly come up with one during the podcast uh by the by the time we finish recording because obviously wouldn't we want to upload this we need to have a name of some sort um so i to to kind of date this i guess i'll say happy thanksgiving uh in Canada, yes. <laughs> so whoever listens to this, uh, if it's like 10 days from Thanksgiving, you know, that's how long it took us to come up with a name. That's the Canadian Thanksgiving, yes. Yeah, yeah. The 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 proper Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yes. Martin Frobisher's Thanksgiving. That one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess like the... So I don't know how you feel about podcasts. I generally don't listen to them. Uh, so there's like standard things <laughs> that people do, like have... Uh, theme songs and shit. Uh, have you put any thought into that? Um, I would be a bigger fan of not being fancy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe someday we'll get there if we if we think it's the right way to go. But uh, I'd rather just have content that's interesting. Um, you know, start the the podcast and just hop right in, kind of thing. Awesome. I'm yeah. I'm on board with that. I I generally hate it when there's like a full minute goes by and. Not a single word has been spoken. Big jingle at the start, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting you bring up that you don't listen to podcasts. I would have said the same thing uh, maybe about a month ago. I recently bought a car, kill me, I know, uh, but now I'm driving to work every day, and so I've actually just started listening to podcasts. Yeah. So I have a little bit more perspective, and I agree this big, long jingle that everyone puts at the start of their podcast is kind of annoying. Um, a lot of advertising and so forth. So, you know, we're just doing this for fun. Let's just have fun and have a clean, content-filled podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't drive to, to work. I take the bus now uh, and the train. Uh, so I have gotten listening into the uh, the Game of Thrones audiobooks. I say books because I've bought multiple, but I've, I'm still on the first one. I thought about audiobooks too. Uh, I don't know. I, I've i been going to work really early, so I'm kind of usually in a daze. I feel like I just lose track of the story if I went with anything more complicated than a couple people talking about something I'm interested in. So, yeah. But I hear ya. Uh, so... What's it like being a parent? 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> you get lots well, of time to play video games? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, I can count on one hand the hours I get per month. So um, uh, I'm sure you've lived the same uh, <laughs> <laughs> life as me. Um, certainly the hours are hugely down. Uh, interestingly, part of my motivation to buy a car now is that I can uh, shift my hours around and get a lot more freedom with when I go to work and stuff. So uh, I'm hoping to get a little more game time in. Starting, I don't know when, sometime, when I can force myself to get up early and stuff, I guess. But uh, yeah, um, also I find my gaming habits have shifted. Uh, I'm, I hear this kind of thing from most parents, but um, a lot more easy games, quick yeah. games. You can jump in, jump out. Not so many uh, games where you can't save for four straight hours kind of thing. Yeah. A lot less games where you need to make a huge commitment. Um, and also I've, I used to be uh, a lot more of a completist. You'd play some Zelda game or Final Fantasy or whatever and just want to get everything. Now it's like, I just want to finish the game. I don't, I don't care, right? I'm, I find myself being very annoyed when there's a lot to do, <laughs> which yeah. makes me kind of sad almost. Like, I, th I don't think it's a bad thing in a game, but uh, it's just the completist in me wants everything, you know? And I, I'm just overcoming that is, is part of transitioning to, to being a lot busier, I guess. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Um... Yeah, I realized that it's been almost a month since I've played a video game, Ooh. which is because uh, my schedule is, is bananas right now. Like I, I just started a, a new gig, um, um, so the our schedules kind of flipped around a little bit. So I mm. get up for work at like five and commute, and then mm. I, I have to be back in Vancouver at five so that I can pick up my kid from the, the nanny. Um, whereas my wife stays in the morning to make sure the kid gets dropped off. So, uh, then, and I, so I pick the kid up at five and then I basically look after the kid until he goes to bed at nine. And then if I'm going to get up at five, I basically have to go to bed at the same time to get my eight hour sleep. Uh, brutal. So. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're in a tiny apartment still, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where I mean that's where I would pose the question to you. Like, how do you get any game time in? I mean, for me, I do have my one little room I can sneak away to. I have an agreement with my wife. Sometimes she'll go do her thing, and then when I get my time, I can at least hide in my room. Yeah, and 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 we do that sometimes. I mean, that's that's the whole reason I'm able to to, to talk to you right now is because we're doing that. Um, so uh, like I do obviously have my computer and we'll play games on that. And uh, one thing that I found recently was I was able to uh, play. Uh, Pokemon Yellow on my Game Boy uh, on on my 3DS. I was able to play that while my kid was around, uh, and he would occasionally come over and go to the home screen, and we'd go into the the note taking app, and he'd start drawing on it. Oh wow! Um, so you know that that worked. It's a handy little console for that. There's no uh, uh, having wires running across the room and stuff that he's gonna like chew on. So yeah. Do you find you've uh, managed to clear any big games, you know, um, any other uh, big, uh, shooters or anything, whatever you're into, whatever you used to be into that might be. Yes and that. no. Actually, let me, I actually am super nerdy and, and, and keep like a, a written record of all the games that I have to play because I own almost 200 and haven't played any of them. I'd laugh at you, but I have exactly the same list, which I could also pull up right now. <laughs> uh, so let's see if I can actually remember this. Uh, I'm logging into Trello right now where I keep that list. Or at least I would be logging in if I knew my password. Ooh. Interesting you use Trello for that, I'll say. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, so obviously I've tried to do a little bit of indie development stuff in my time at home. Uh, and it's kind of like a useful thing for like keeping track of like to-do lists. And so it just seemed natural to me at one point to like transform my to-do list uh, for games. So I've got my, my log of stuff that I need to play and log of stuff that I have played. <laughs> That's funny. You know, I, I tried to force myself to like Trello to learn to use it well. I just I can't get away from spread from uh, from just plain text files. I mean, it just works for me. So, yeah. Trello, I don't know. Not for me. Damn. Um, yeah. So I don't. I can't remember my login, and I, I don't want to do, bother trying to figure <laughs> that out while uh, 
while in the middle of a podcast here. But um, I managed to play uh, Pokemon Yellow. Uh, so I played uh, Heart of Thorns, the, the expansion pack for Guild Wars 2. Uh, but yeah, the same that you were saying about giving up completionism, like I didn't do all the side quests and stuff to like get every collectible thing on the map uh, per se. I basically just ground, grinded my way through the story, uh, and, and, and enjoyed that. And, and I got like, I don't know, six, seven hours of enjoyment out of this MMO expansion, (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I'm de- I, that definitely is a steep contrast from a few years ago when I would play it hardcore and like get like complete map completion on everything. Right. You know, I found myself getting just, I guess, selective in what I take a completionist approach to. Like you probably, yeah. uh, you might recall recently anyway, um, I was complaining about Zelda mini games and just how frustrating they were, partially because, you know, I don't have time, I don't want to do this, I just want to finish the game kind of thing. But um, something, like, I mean, Zelda, I've been playing these games for so long, I do kind of want to go through and, and get the games I haven't beaten and just take the complete completionist approach and finish them. Um, so there's, like, certain series I, I will still do that for. But, right. Uh, certain series especially newer games where i don't have that that history i don't have that uh uh you know commitment i guess um from my childhood to beating every game yeah i, I don't know I, I can't even that doesn't that feeling doesn't even well up inside me i'm just like yeah okay the game's fun let's just beat it yeah i was i was it was totally like that with pokemon i mean th- that was the first time i'd ever played a pokemon game and like the whole thing behind it is you got to catch them all that's kind um, of <laughs> It's which, the game for completionists. Which, uh, to be fair, you can't even do that unless you cheat now because like, it, it was designed at the time. Yeah. Uh, there was one Pokemon that you could only get through a, a, an event that Nintendo held. Uh, so you can cheat and you can get that Pokemon now, but otherwise it doesn't exist in the game. And they need a link cable too. I mean, I thought I don't yeah. know about Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, I remember with like the red, blue, green, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, were. yeah. You're yeah, you're supposed fun. to trade to to get specific yeah. ones too. Like they don't all exist in the one game. Um, which you can trade over Wi-Fi on the 3DS. Um, so that's that's cool. But yeah, it's it's something that it's impossible for me to to be a completionist with. So I was able to just uh, play the game and just to kind of enjoy it. Um, Right. Um, yeah. Plus so I've, I found I found the list, and, and of the games that I played this year, the the one that I probably spent the most time with at home was I picked up Total War Shogun Two. Oh yeah, I I played that maybe five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I played I played one full campaign of that at home, and that's like a Civ game where you know you can spread that out over a good number of hours. Yeah. Uh, especially your first time through. Um, and then I played Suikoden on the PSP during my lunches. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, so yeah, there's there's definitely a big move uh, from trying to play anything like a Grand Theft Auto V or <laughs> a, a full Guild Wars or a, you know Final Fantasy or something that's like a, an eighty hour game and and bringing it down into stuff that's a lot shorter this year. Yeah, um, you want my whole list of games I've beaten this year? Sure. Consists of three big titles. Um, Castlevania three. three. Yeah, I know. And I pretty much all of them are single. Se- yeah, all of them single session games. Uh, yeah. Castle- Castlevania three, Power Blade, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. All right. Nice. Yeah. I've- uh, yeah, I've got a longer <laughs> list than that. Well, uh, I've I've dabbled in a lot of games, so I mean, I'm getting my game time in a little bit. And I, I'm, you know, me, I like uh, I like simulations and stuff. So I'm yeah. playing. I was playing uh, uh, City Skylines a bit and and games like that. So, um, you know, there's games you don't really beat, uh, yeah. per se, but yeah, for games that uh, have campaigns and such, I'm not doing too good. Although I am at the end of uh, Phantom Hourglass. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I can't even re- really remember anything about that game. Ah, uh, uh, man, I could, <laughs> I could get into it. I would say it's... We'll, we'll save okay. that for another yeah. time. Sure, all right. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time talking specifically about Zelda's, uh, later. Uh, but so there's, I, I guess trying to segue into what our, our intended, uh, thing was that we wanted to talk about. Uh, we, we've, we've got this, um, I guess you were playing some Nintendo games, the Castlevania 
game. And we're kind of talking about how we've got very little time and we're trying to get more into games that you can just pick up and get in and out of. Uh, so one thing that I caught that uh, was very appealing to me was the this uh, Nintendo Mini that has been announced this summer. Indeed. Excitement. Have you seen it? Uh, not physically. Yeah, um, they had it at PAX this year. They didn't. It wasn't playable, but they had it in a little box, a little glass box where you could kind of, you know, oogle at. Stroke the box. Yeah, yeah, you know, drool over. Uh, yeah, I, so I, I've run into the unfortunate thing where uh, I found out about it, but too late to even do a pre-order because the NES Mini, like, s- the pre-order sold out in, like, a few minutes. <laughs> right. uh, and they're not even available from anywhere other than Amazon in Canada. Or yeah. I think they are, you could pre-order on Best Buy, but like not from Toys R Us or anything else. I'm sure you can buy it off eBay for like triple the cost. Yeah, it's like $200 or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's the, the NES Mini uh, and then the Famicom Mini, which was just announced, what, like a week ago? Um, yeah, uh, with slightly different selection of games. And so it's this, unfortunately, I did find out about that immediately, and I was too on the fence, and then that pre-order sold out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even think to pre-order. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to actually be in that area when it's released. I'll just pick it up. Yeah, right. <laughs> <I don't> think... <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, you might. You might be able to just walk. Like, so you, you're going to Japan, eh? Uh, yeah, um, wedding and some other things to take care of, which I mean, I like going to Japan. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. You might be able to just walk into a store and, and if you can, uh, pick me up a copy too. <laughs> I do intend to try. So seriously, if I see two I, or if I, if I can get my hands on two, then, uh, yeah, but don't hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I guess I'll pose the question. What is it that appeals, uh, to you? so much with the uh, NES Mini, Famicom Mini? Well, for me, uh, so like I, like I said earlier, I, I was playing Suikoden on the PSP. I was playing Pokemon Yellow on the, the 3DS. Um, I love a lot of old classic games, uh, and I love actually supporting the companies that made them. So I could certainly just pick all the stuff up on emulator and, and and play that on my computer whenever I want. And and to be fair, I have actually downloaded a lot of the stuff and and just never did play it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're awesome. Yeah, uh, kids, man. But but I don't know. It's it feels more nostalgic and fun to me if I'm actually playing something that that I'm I'm supporting the people that made it somehow. Yeah, um, and you know, I kind of like uh, being involved in the community, if you will. Like, I mean, there's other people excited about this. You buy it, you share yeah. your experience. That kind of thing's always fun. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nice it's, to see Nintendo finally uh, really taking this thing that they've been sitting on for so long, their their classic console, and uh, you know, churning out this nostalgia box for people. I mean, they could have done this ten years ago. Yeah, like you've been able to buy like Sega and Atari shit like this for a long time too what is it called the neo geo uh there was the neo geo one yeah yeah gold or something i forget what it was called yeah Yeah. which uh they 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 made a mess out of the the hardware on that system so it it kind of failed for Mm. that sort of reason like the the video was just garbage and stuff um which I, i guess they're kind of making some of those same bad decisions with these two consoles in my opinion uh, how so? Uh, so if you if you look at the the NES Classic, the 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 English version, they they are using a full size controller, so that's great. Uh, I, did, but, I did hear the fam- the uh, yeah the Famicom Mini. They're shrinking the controller or something. I don't know. Well, the, well, they're shrinking the whole system, right? And yeah. and because the the controllers it's were designed to fit onto the system, yeah. they shrunk the controllers too. So they're three quarters of the size that they originally were. And they were originally too small. Yeah, they, they originally felt small. I mean, to, to, so to be fair, their their current shrunken state is uh, the same width as the original Game Boy, 9 millimeters, or sorry, yeah. 9 centimeters. I did read that, yeah. Uh, and the Game Boy Color was even smaller, but those consoles also had some thickness to them, so there was like some, I don't know, it, it, it seemed like your fingers can actually be enclosed and not overlapping each other yeah 
so the they got the controller size right with the the English version, but from what I understand, the cable is really short. Mm. Um, and and there's absolutely no sort of plan for like expandability or whatnot. So it it is nice that there's thirty mostly good games available, but it, it would have been nice if there had been some sort of uh, way to expand the games on it. Yeah, you know, I I don't know how they do it. I don't even have a good suggestion. But if they did even just have a console slot. So, I mean, yeah. just think of how many people, you know, maybe mid-30s, uh, finally have some income, some disposable income that they can spend on this kind of thing, still have their old games they had from when they were little, and this comes out and it has a con- has that actual original uh, cartridge slot on it. Yeah. I mean, people would go crazy, wouldn't they? I-, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. I was almost thinking it'd be cool if they just re-released the NES. Like That would be more exciting to me, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Probably because I have all these games already, but yeah, <laughs> that's just me. So I mean, there's 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 two sides to that, though. Um, so the what I do like is a this thing uh, has HDMI, and yeah. and it has uh, suspend points built into it, so you can easily pick up this game and, and put it down and play it on a modern uh, displays. Um, so I think it's got that going for it, but also you. you it, as much as I loved the original systems, the hardware did have a lot of failure. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Uh, so even if you are able to start using old games and stuff, then you're you're going to have the inevitable people whose like batteries are, are starting to fail in those old old things, or pins are corroded and whatnot. So it would be neat that you could get the new system, and you can get them from third parties. But I'm happier to have something like this where it's like all built into it and, and it's got the, the options on it for like the different uh, display types. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think um, it would have been cool actually to get the best of both worlds and have all of that really. I mean, just think yeah. if you had uh, a system where you had the different, sa- you could essentially use save states, you could switch between different output, you could have HDMI and whatever else people want. Um, yeah. And it had cartridge slot like that'd be perfect and it's entirely possible right like i've seen yeah. hardware hacks where people do that so a first party solution would have been awesome i think yeah yeah but i mean it's still it's definitely i think it's a great thing that they're uh they're putting out this for us us mid 30 uh, mid 30s kids with money yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm interested in getting it and and so I mentioned the the controller size difference, and I think the Famicom Mini, the, the Japanese version, is dumb in the way that they've got shrunken controllers. Uh, but from what I can tell, uh, it's powered by USB by default. And I actually wish that the, the English version did that, because it looks like that's AC by default. The system itself is powered by USB? Yeah. So for the Famicom Mini, if you want the AC adapter, you have to buy that separately. So That's the Famicom Mini c- comes with USB yeah. and the con- two controllers and the console, and you buy the AC. And the English version comes with the, the system, one controller, the AC, and you have to buy a second controller. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword there, though. I mean, the uh, the Famicom Mini, I know the controllers are hardwired which yeah. is a huge issue with the famicom 30 years ago and i know they're reproducing it uh quite accurately or whatever but yeah i mean it's going to be an issue again is it not like they could have had yeah. a, a very hard to make out actual port you can connect to there you know what i mean so it looks yeah like there's no port when really there is and then you could disconnect controllers when they break or whatever I don't yeah know. i think that would have been the smart way to to do it mm. um because I, I guess with the NES, the Mini, they uh, you can actually unplug those controllers and you can plug them in uh, to your Wii controller uh, or the Wii U controller. Yeah, it looks like that's a Wii port, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Wii controller port. Hmm. And then I guess the Famicom Mini doesn't get that function. So it's interesting how the, the I guess, design of the original consoles is playing a big role in, in the function of these redesigns. Yeah. It shows they really are playing off nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I do play a lot of Famicom games, but I have the the new Famicom, the AV one, right? Uh, Right. um, And it has all these features that the NES got, the uh, controllers you can disconnect, 
um, the AV output directly, like just out of box. And that's the one they should have reproduced, right? But I mean, people wouldn't recognize it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why they they're not doing the top loading NES, right? That's it. Yep. Uh, so what do you think about the the game list? Um, I think it's pretty good, honestly. I mean, I like that they went out of their way to get a lot of third-party titles. I like that uh, they are good third-party titles. Like, um, looking at the Japanese list, for example, I mean, they have that, uh, obviously, I think everyone knows the uh, the whole River City Ransom series in Japan. There's like, uh, geez, six or seven games on the Famicom uh, with those Itsu guys. And they're all super fun, or most of them. And they have two of them. They have, uh, in the Japan selection, the River City Ransom and this other one, this... Uh, uh, it's like a racing sports event game. And I love those games. I mean, they're, I wouldn't call them obscure, but they're certainly, I wouldn't have expected them to include them on this kind of uh, set, if you will. And Final Fantasy III, I think, was a fantastic game for Famicom. Um, looking at the US only list, you have all the stuff people really remember and want to play too, I think. I mean, Castlevania II, Final Fantasy I, Kid Icarus, Punch Out. Uh, good list, definitely. Common games are good there. I'm surprised actually that Balloon Fight is in the, uh, the US game selection. Yeah. I don't, I guess they did release it. Yeah. Yeah, it was released, but I mean. It, it was definitely released, and it, I, I guess it was one of the earlier ones that a lot of people would have played, and that one, like, joust. Yeah. I just feel like. I mean, in Japan, I'm pretty sure everyone knows this game. And I feel like here, it's quite obscure. I don't hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, did you play Bloom Fight growing up? Not to the point where I care about it. <laughs> uh, I, I certainly did. Like I said, that was definitely one of the early games that I played. But mm. to me, that's like coming in from like the, the Atari era of stuff where it's like super simple Right. Or I guess even like arcade stuff where it's just like super simple with like not real depth. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, the, so that was actually, I I felt like maybe that does belong because there probably are a lot of people that have played it. But there, there were a couple of choices that were made that I felt like maybe should have been different. Yeah. Um, uh, so like Super C, for example. Right. Like, I, I feel like Contra, the first one, would have been a better choice. I didn't even notice it wasn't on there. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I was pretty gutted that Japan got River City Ransom and America didn't, because <laughs> that was, like, my favorite game on yeah. the NES, I think. So yeah. as much as I like the original Final Fantasy, I feel like maybe that was a poor choice. Because mm. I feel like the people that care about Final Fantasy have already picked that up uh, in one of the other various forms that exists. Multiple times even, probably. Yeah, probably multiple times. Yeah. So I, I feel like for the nostalgia people that aren't super into picking that up on multiple systems, maybe that was a wasted slot that could have gone to something like River City Ransom. Mm, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I mean... Looking at the game list, there's not a lot of really RPG-ish games. Here. That's true. I mean, I guess there's Zelda, Zelda 2. Um, but yeah, I mean... And to be honest, I didn't really... <laughs> I didn't enjoy the original Final Fantasy so much. I like that yeah. Japan, Japan got Final Fantasy 3 because I think that's uh, an underrated classic. And it was the only Final Fantasy that didn't have a remake for so long. The West yeah. only ever got that uh, DS remake, which I was not a huge fan of. So, you know, it's cool that they... Oh, yeah, it, it seems audience. like that makes sense there. And, yeah. and you know, they obviously chose to get rid of the first Final Fantasy in favor of that. So Yeah, I mean, it was a much more popular game there. What I found interesting, um, I guess particularly for the, uh, the Japanese selection, but um, likewise for the U.S. selection, um, is that they don't have the original Mario 2 there. They have Mario, like our Mario 2, Mario USA in Japan, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm, look, and I'm, I'm wondering why, and I'm thinking, I know it was a disc game, uh, and maybe something about the way they've set up the emulation. They didn't emulate discs or something. Because in Japan, it was on the disc system, right? Uh, and then looking at the game Is list... Is that though, true for all of the all the games? Where, where Are none of those disc system games? So nothing from the Japan... Like, the, the set of games here exclusive to Japan, none of those are disc games. But then okay. when you look at the advertising for the Japanese system, they show 
pictures of discs because some of these games in Japan were disc games like Metroid and like, right. like uh, Zelda 1 and 2. Like those Zelda 2 in Japan, for example, was only disc. But I'm thinking since it was released in the U.S. on cartridge, maybe they just kind of took the U.S. ROM and, and repatched it with the original Japanese stuff and put it on the system or something. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, because uh, Mario 2 is literally exclusively disc. Like there's just no other version of it. I'm, there's yeah. probably some pirated version or something, right? But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that would have been a really cool. Well, no, they, I thought they did re-release that as Mario USA. No, Mario USA in Japan was, was, uh, our Mario, the, the easier Mario two with the turnups and stuff. Yeah. 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 I'm speaking, I mean, in Japan, the original Mario two, the really tough one. Yeah. That would have been a cool addition to the set, I think. Yeah. The lost levels. Yeah. Lost levels. Yeah. Yeah. And and I guess I'm kind of surprised that they used Castlevania two because I love that game. But I felt like most people hated it. Like it was super obscure <laughs> on what to do in the game. Yeah, and Castlevania Three is a much better game. I, I love Two, but I really love Three. So I'm, I like the Twos there, but Three would have been a cool addition. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, with, with like Double Dragon and Mega Man, they chose specifically the second one. So I mm-hmm. feel like, you know, just because you've got Castlevania One doesn't mean you need the second one. I feel like Castlevania Three would have been a much better choice. Yeah, yeah, agree. And Ninja uh, Gaiden one, mm, yeah, good, good choice. I like two. I think most people would go with two. Two was definitely easier, so I feel like that got accepted much better by the public. Yeah, fair point. And then I felt like uh, I hated both Galaga and Gradius, so I would have liked to see. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to see one of them get replaced with something like RBI Baseball. Yeah, they're very similar games, too. I mean, that's kind of maybe a blunder on their part. Um, um, actually, wait. Galaga and Gradius. You hated yeah. Gradius? Yeah, I didn't like Gradius. I was thinking Galaga and uh, Galaxian. Gradius, I thought, was a fantastic game, personally. I like Gradius, too, but I think that was... I mean, I just was never really much of a fan of those panning background games. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I otherwise I feel like it's it's mostly a great selection. Like I am disappointed. Like I said, that the the, the Famicom is going to be hard for me to get because I've been trying to learn Japanese quite a bit this year. And like one of the first things I did was come up with a list of games that I could be playing in Japanese to help me learn. And I don't know. I feel like this this would be a pretty complete package of stuff. Like if I wanted to buy Zelda two and import that for the Game Boy Advance and stuff like that, there's some good cost associated if I want to start importing Japanese games and not just emulate them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows, right? I mean, maybe once all the hula settles, yeah. it'll become easier to get. It might even show up on a, a store shelf somewhere, some, yeah. some uh, game shop somewhere. Yeah, there's there's a site called Play Asia, and they've they've oh, yeah. created a, a a pre-order page, but it hasn't gone live. So mm. I don't know. Hopefully, I can get on that. But. Right, it's probably a huge markup, though. Uh, and and I guess speaking back to what I mentioned earlier with the USB, like that's part of the reason I'm interested in the Famicom Mini as well, because truth be told, I'm probably not going to put this on my 40 inch TV and sit like two feet away from it. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I I feel like the the better approach is to have it on my desk next to my computer monitor. Right. Yeah. Um that's another interesting thing uh now that you mentioned it actually. Um obviously HDMI output everyone's going to want that. That's great. No one wants to have their enormous big ass CRT clogging up their space in their apartment or whatever, but Yeah. I don't know. I just can't get over it. It's just so nostalgic for me. Playing a game on a CRT is just like it just brings me back so much more than playing it on a computer screen. And I mean, the point is not just to be brought back, if you will, but yeah. this thing is just oozes nostalgia, right? Like, I don't know what they could possibly do aside from literally having the, uh, the analog output on it. Um, I mean, trying to emulate that feel you get out of a CRT would fall flat on its face, right? I mean, I've seen emulators do it and do a good job, but yeah, you just can't beat the CRT for that, that feel, right? That buzz, that glow, just everything. Yeah, it's true, and and I mean they they they're trying to capture that. They've got those uh, the screen emulators where you can apply like the the scan line filter and yeah. stuff on top of it. But it's it's totally not the same as the actual 
rectangular pixels that bleed <laughs> the color into each other. Yeah, yeah. Still, very cool, very cool. It's it's kind of uh, I guess that they could have solved that a little bit by just having both outputs, right? Like they if they had have made it so that you could output it to a CRT. Yeah. I think it's not a trivial uh, yeah. problem to solve, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and probably that would have pushed the price up quite a bit. And yeah. I mean, from a business point of view, I mean, geeks like us might go crazy for that kind of thing. But I, I'm sure. A yeah. Lot there's of there's do. not a lot of people that still <laughs> yeah. have those TVs. <laughs> and probably a lot of people are just like, oh man, I can play Nintendo again, sweet, and they don't think any more of it, right? I mean, it's just people like me that would be like, but it's not on a CRT, oh, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was so mad when, because uh, when I was living in San Francisco, I still hadn't bought a new TV. Uh, so I moved down there and I got like a free 27 inch CRT from Craigslist. Yeah. And so I lugged that a couple blocks uphill to my apartment. Like, Jeez, man, how? <laughs> those things are heavy. <laughs> oh, man, did, did I tell you about the CRT I just got? No. Oh, my. So. Um, there's a mailing list at work for people uh, who are into old games and stuff. And someone posted on there and they said, I have this really nice CRT I bought in, I forget, 2003 or something. It's an HD TV. It's huge. It's like <laughs> 36 inches, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm looking, it's looking for a good home. I'm just going to throw it to the recycle shop if no one takes it. And he had it up there for about a week and no one was taking it. So I messaged him. Like I messaged the group and I just said, you know, that's an awesome TV. I'd love to have it, but I there's no way I could get that to my place in a million years. Good luck. You know, just I don't know why I sent that message. Yeah. But someone, someone else messaged and they're like, I would hate to see this TV go to waste. I would love to see it go to a good home. So you know what? I'm going to help you bring that to your house. And I was like, what? Really? Awesome. So me and this <laughs> other geek teamed up, went to this guy's house, lugged this thing it's i looked at the like 300 book. pounds literally this the uh the manual came with it because the guy still had it and it's 261 pounds <laughs> i get to my house uh wife was pissed but i now have an awesome crt in my room <laughs> <laughs> so you know at least you got a space heater for the winter <laughs> yeah yeah um yes. uh the thing is that it's we have it on the floor now and i want to prop it up so i can actually like sit on uh, a chair and play games and stuff and yeah. yeah i this is a problem i haven't come up with a solution for yet yeah yeah get yourself a beanbag chair and sit on the floor that was one solution i had considered yes very much uh yeah so i i remember getting that tv and being quite pleased that i had something for free uh so the first thing i did was plug in my playstation 3 and tried playing nino kuni on it okay which is like completely impossible to play on those old TVs because all the modern games, like the font sizes are like so small and yeah, I was going to say it's just completely it. illegible. So that, that was basically my turning point where I was like, okay, well if I can't play both old games and new games, it's, it's time to just give up and play the new games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tough sacrifice to make. I'll say that. Yeah. It's uh, not as difficult of a choice when you're living in like 500 square feet. <laughs> I imagine, yes. Yeah, I don't know that there was a, a whole lot else uh, to, to to mention about the Famicom at the moment, uh, other than when you when you uh, if if you do see one in Japan, definitely pick one up for me. Yeah, we'll do. Are you going to? Uh, well, I guess you only have the. You're in a small place. I know. I I tend to take all my stuff and jam it into my my special space I have here, but uh, something this small, I might be able to pull off putting in the living room so well that's the thing is it's small enough that that can sit right on my desk next to my computer so uh i'm, I'm not overly concerned with the, the space and plus we're uh, i'm going to be moving in probably january to montreal and right. uh, the, the goal is to get something slightly larger than 600 square feet when we're there nice two bedroom uh hopefully at least Rock on, man! It's it's gonna it's it's the first time I'm accepting a job where I'm anticipating being there for uh, a little while. So, mm. uh, and especially now that we've got a three family, three member family, it's uh, I don't know. We might want just a little bit more comfort. Different considerations for different yep. stages of life. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, you've been in Vancouver quite a while though, right? I mean, you were off and on. Years. Yeah. Um, was last in seemed to last quite a while yeah well the, i mean the first time i came it was uh a year and a, a year and a quarter maybe 
And then it's been maybe a year and a half this time around, mm. uh, maybe a year and three quarters. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, those are both long term <laughs> considering how frequently I move around. Yeah. Uh, but I'm expecting to be in Montreal for at least two years, whereas both times when I came to Montreal or both times I came to Vancouver, I didn't know how long I'd be there. Right. So. Got it. Got it. How you feel? Uh, gonna miss it? Kind of bittersweet? Kind of meh? Both. Uh, I, I like moving. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we're both from Nova Scotia, and we've both moved a little bit. I I went from <laughs> <laughs> my favorite place in the world uh, right. to Toronto, to Sydney, Australia, to Vancouver, to San Francisco, to Glasgow, Scotland, back to San Francisco, back to Vancouver, uh, and I'm looking forward to to a change of environment and and getting to see all the the, the new things that a, a new city has to offer. Um, but at the same time, the, I like Vancouver, so uh, the, uh, I'm going to miss some stuff. But right on. Well, you always have the freedom to go back. I mean, that's yeah. part of the. I, I'm sure that's one of the the draws of this lifestyle you live. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. did fall in love with some place, then well, just head back sometime. Yeah. Yep. And you know, by the time we come back, maybe uh, the housing bubble of, will have crashed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess that's uh, that's it for podcast number zero. We'll call it. Sure. Yeah. In case uh, we're ashamed to release it, right? Yeah. Well, we did, we didn't bother to come up with a name during during this right. thing, did we? That's so, uh, homework, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll 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 have an exciting name and then uh, launch this thing soon, and uh, hopefully we can make a regular event out of this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can probably. Uh, are you always going to need to to escape your own home and go to the library or some other space? Not always. Um, it's probably the easiest for me. I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. See ya, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>